Hi, my name is Jeff. I'm with RCD RV, and we're going to do a walkthrough on this 2020 Spirit. So starting here at the back, that comes off of there. There's where you want to put your sewage hose. Put it in your back bumper. It keeps all the smells out from the inside. Simply snap this on and off. Okay. This is a little place you can tie your doggy off, or your grandkids, or your kids, whatever you need to tie off. But that's what that is. Nothing more than that. You got a door to the bathroom. This makes it nice so the kids aren't running through the whole house to get to the restroom. This is a black water or black tank flush. Now what a black tank flush is, inside your black tank was, was, is where your toilet waste goes. There's a little spinner. That spinner is like a sprinkler system. So maybe two or three times a year, take a hose, put it, to, put it on here, turn the pressure on, pull your black valve on the other side, and I'll show you how that works in a minute. And it spins and cleans the black tank out. That's good to do, like I said, two or three times a year. Uh, you have to make sure your black valve's pulled out so the water, the waste all goes out and it doesn't come up through the commode. But a, a black water tank flush is a great option to have. So this is this is nice to have. Your cable hookup. Uh, if your camper has cable, this is where you hook it up to a TV. There's two 110 outlets. That white sticker under there means it's connected to a GFI switch. A GFI switch in these campers are normally in the bathroom. We'll look when we go inside. Inside here, if you look back in through there, that's your manual crank for your slide. If something ever happens to your slide, there's a tool in the front you, you put on here and you can actually crank your slide in manually. So if you ever lose power and you have to get your slide in, that's how you do it. The outdoor awning looks to be about a 20 foot awning power button got LED lighting on the outside and we'll work that when we go inside your outdoor kitchen you have a nice sink here with hot and cold water a light switch phone charger uh, again two 110 outlets storage up above bottle opener your refrigerator works on 110 only it will not run off the battery of the coach it has to be you have to be plugged into electric for your refrigerator to work this has an outdoor grill so if you slide it out you got a two burner stove top turn it to light uh, you need a match or a lighter light it your propane hookup is right here so what you need to do is connect it right down there to the valve right here and as long as your propane tank is on, you'll get gas through your gas grill. You do have to unplug it to close it back up. Simply slide it back in. Try to remember to put this latch on here so it doesn't move during transport when you know when you're transporting. Okay. This is the out, this is the back side of your uh, your refrigerator. There's nothing to do in here. It's a maintenance-free refrigerator. It's a drip tube in case there's any moisture in the refrigerator. But maybe once a year, take these these screws out of here, pull the panel off, and clean it out. Uh, sometimes mice or squirrels like to nest in there. It's a good idea to keep it clean. Uh, you got two speakers for your uh, stereo on the inside. You can play it outside or inside or both at the same time. Over your stove top, you have a range hood uh, and you have a uh, hood fan. That thing opens up when you turn the fan on and exhausts your smoke and things out, outside. This is the back of your furnace. This does get hot when you run your furnace, so don't set anything in front of this. The kids or anybody that will burn and uh, leave a mark. Don't uh, set a table up against this or anything like that. Leave that to where it vents. Okay? Your steps, your step, your door has to be open all the way up. Simply lift your steps up and lock it into place. But if your door is not all the way, if your door is like that, not all the way open, it's going to scratch and dent the door. So just make sure that door is all the way open. You have adjustable legs here. If the ground 
below you is not uh, perfectly even, you can adjust your legs. This camper is equipped with solar, or it is pre-wired for solar, so if you were boondocking, as they say, and you wanted to uh, get some solar panels, you plug them into here. And what it does, it puts a, a two amp charge onto your battery. Your storage. This is the crank to crank your slide room in. Now each corner of your coach has stabilizer legs. They're not levelizer, levelers or stabilizers. So once you get your coach level, you want to put these legs down. Just crank them down, snug them into the ground. Then when you're done camping, bring them back up. But don't try to level with these because they're not set up to do it. They're not that heavy duty that they're going to lift the coach up. Okay? This is a, a hose, and I'll show you where this goes on the other side. Okay, you got a spare tire underneath here. You got a brand new uh, interstate battery. That is a maintenance battery, so it does need to have. Does, okay, your battery is under this case. It's a brand new interstate battery, a deep cycle battery. And it is a maintenance battery, so you do have to keep an eye on the water level on it. Maybe a couple years, check the water level on it, okay? Brand new battery. Uh, inside here, you have two 20-pound uh, propane tanks. Like a gas grill, just turn them on and off here. You have a directional valve here. This is pointing to this tank. So that takes the active tank, the active tank. To switch it, just scoot it over, point to this tank, that makes this the active tank. Now you can run both tanks at the same time by putting it straight up and down, but if we, you run out of propane, then you're out of propane. So I suggest running one tank empty, then going to the next tank, okay? I'll come back and take care of that. Uh, you got an electric tongue jack, retract and extend, simple up and down. And you have a light here on and off switch for your light. Seven pin uh, wiring harness to attaches to your tow uh, vehicle along with an emergency brake cable which also attach attaches to your tow vehicle. Storage goes through clear to the other side. Another stabilizer leg. Alright if you were to carry water. This unit probably holds 40 to 50 gallons of water. Simply put a hose in here and, and wait till it kind of spits out at you and you're full. This water, when you use this water, you turn on your water pump on the inside and it pumps the water out of here into, uh, into the camper. Now you have a drain outlet. For some reason you wanted to get rid of your water on board, say it's the end of the season, there's a drain valve under that to drain that tank. Some more storage here. Okay, this is your uh, sewage valve. Uh, simply take this cap off. You need to have a sewer hose. You connect it onto here, put the other end into the ground at the campground. You have a liquid waste, which would be your, your sinks and your shower. Then you have body waste, which would be your, your commode. So what you want to do is you want to pull, these valves are open right now. What you want to do when you want to empty your tanks, make sure your hose is on, pull your black valve first, which is the commode, then pull your, your liquid waste valve. Let this drain until it's pretty much drained, then pull this valve open and let it push all the black down into your sewage tank. Now if your campground does not have uh, sewage then you need to take it to somewhere where you can dump your tanks uh, there's a gauge on the inside it will tell you give you a rough idea how full your tanks are but 
black first, then gray. It's in the back of your hot water tank. It's gas and electric, okay? There's a plug right here. As soon as you put water to the unit, the water goes directly to the hot water tank. Make sure the plug's in because if the plug's not in, all the water you're putting in is going to come out. So put your plug in. Uh, if, if you're not going to camp for two or three weeks, I would take this plug out and let it drain. Get the water out of it because the water sits in there for a while. It's going to get some goose stag and start to smell. Nothing to do in here. Keep it clean. Insects and mice like to nest in here. Just keep it clean. Take a look at it every now and then. But again, uh, drain your water if you're not going to use for the if you're not going to use the camper for a couple of weeks. This is your power cord. This is a 110 cord. Uh, it's 30 amp, so 110, 30 amp. It is not 220. Don't plug it into 220. It's 110 only. This is the cable in from your cable source. So if the campground has cable, this is where you plug your cable in and you Sounds good, buddy. to the TV on the other side. City water connection. If you're at a campground and they have water, take your hose, connect it to here, and it pressurizes your water lines inside the camper. Turn, make sure the hose is turned on, then all your outlets on the in, inside of the camper will have pressure. That hose I showed you a little bit earlier, this is where you connect it. It's like an air chuck. So we put it on there, and as soon as you put it in, you squeeze the trigger and you'll have water. You can either have, have the city water from the hose or you can turn your pump on and have the water coming out of your holding tank. This is for a satellite hookup. Okay. Another drain outlet right here underneath. That drains your water lines. See that right there? That'll drain your water lines. And again, you have another corner stabilizer. This is kind of nice. You have access to the bunk room. Lots of storage right here. These bunks do lift up if you want a more storage. So this is a nice, nice feature. It is wired for a backup camera. That's an option, but it is wired. You'd have to buy the uh, the camera itself and the monitor, but it is wired for one. Okay, so that's everything on the outside. What we're gonna do is go inside and show you some of the features on the inside now. All right, your panel on the inside it has diff different levels. It has your battery level. Hit the button. It shows it's full. Fresh shows there's water on board. Black's empty. Gray's empty. And gray's empty. Okay. Uh, again, the black and the gray, I wouldn't trust it to be 100% correct. It will give you a good indication. But if you get the two-thirds full, I'd, I'd dump your tanks. You don't want the, the system backing up into the camper. Uh, you have electric and gas water heater. Simply turn the button on if you want electric. Turn the gas button on if you want gas. If you want gas, make sure your propane bottle is turned on and this will heat with gas. Now, you're asked why maybe there's two of them. There's electric and gas. If you're at a campground and you're paying for your, your, your site and it includes electricity, use the electric because you're paying for it. If you're out somewhere and you don't have electric or you're not paying for your electric at your campground, go ahead and use your gas. As long as your propane bottles are on, you're gonna, it's going to work. Uh, your water pump. The holding water that I showed you that you filled up inside the camper, turn that pump on, it pumps the water out to all the uh, outlets on the inside. You got a living room light switch and your awning. That's an awning light, on and off, and your awning extend and retract button is right here. Simply hold the button. Wherever you, wherever you let go of it, it stops. And you bring it in. If there's a tree or something out there, you can stop it before it hits the tree. So wherever you let go of it, it, it stops. Your slide, slide uh, room, simple in and out switch. Right now it's out, so if you want to bring it in, hit the button and it comes in. And it, you can't over bring it in. It, wherever it... Uh, you can, you can let go of the button, it will stop there. But to bring it all the way in, just keep the button held down. Now, if it's raining out and you, you have the room like this halfway in, halfway out, it's not watertight. In order for it to be watertight, it's got to be all the way out or all the way in. And that's, 
that's the noise you want to hear. That tells you it's all the way out. It makes the same noise when you bring it in. Okay. Down here at the bottom, you have a vent for heat. Heat comes from the floor, air comes from the ceiling. Two 110 outlets, a carbon, uh, that's a carbon, uh, carbon detector, and also a propane sniffer. What happens if, uh, say for example, your uh, pilot light goes out on your, on your stove top and it smells propane, that will sound off like a smoke detector. And if it does that, you need to go outside and turn your bottles off and come inside and see what you left on. Uh, but that's a good safety feature. As long as you see that green light on down there, that is hardwired to the battery, that means it is active. A double basin sink. You have a uh, stove top and an oven here, stove top. Simply roll that back. If the propane's on, which the propane is, is not on apparently, just turn it to light and click it. You got a night light there. Down here, to light the oven, you turn it to light, hold it in, take a match, light it underneath here, hold it in for 10 seconds after it lights, and turn it to whatever temperature you want. This does not work off the clicker. Okay. Stove top, you have a, over range, you have a light, you have a fan, your microwave, just like you would have at home, but smaller. Refrigerator is gas and electric. Okay, what that means, it'd be because it knows there's no propane. But what that means is, if you put it on automatic, automatic means if you're at a campground and you're sleeping and the power goes out for some reason in the middle of the night, it will automatically go to propane as long as your propane bottle's turned on. Electric comes back on, it automatically will go back to electric. So you don't have any, you don't have anything to worry about if the power goes out. Now, if you want to drive down the road four or five hours, load this up with with groceries, it's going to run on propane, and it's made to do that. You get to the campground, you plug it in, it will automatically go to electric. You don't even have to touch any buttons. So, 99% of the time, leave it on on automatic. This is your fuse box, fuse panel. Okay, you have breakers and you have fuses. Everything's marked. Fuses are for 12 volts and the breakers are for 110. Everything's marked exactly what it is, just like at home. Inside here is your converter. Your converter is your battery charger. So once in a while, you're gonna hear that something run back there, like a little fan. That's normal. You're supposed to hear that. That's charging your battery. AM, FM, DVD, CD player for your TV. Again, you can play music outside, inside, or both at the same time, or, or separate them. When you put a DVD in to watch a movie, it will come out through the speakers up here, not the TV speaker. Uh, just the TV by itself, it plays through the TV speaker then. Uh, air conditioning, ceiling air, and then you have vents throughout the whole coach. And you can actually turn those and, and uh, direct them whatever, whatever way you want. Smoke detector. Probably a uh, six volt battery in there. Pantry. Your bathroom. Again, you had a exterior door right there. The commode is a pedal commode. Halfway down, puts water in the tank. Then all the way down, flush it. Okay, and it's all written on the back of the, the toilet here, exactly how things work. Here's your GFI switch, right here. Light. Uh, your ceiling fan right there. Exhaust fan. Medicine cabinet. Hot and cold water. And a nice shower. Your bunks have uh, lights in them, outlets, phone charger, air, window with a blind, and the same down here. 
Your ladder simply pulls out. The couch pulls out into a bed. Just lift up on it, pull it out. And some of the lights you have to turn off by hand. Turn on, turn off. Okay, your table, your table, this will pop up. Simply lift the lid off the poles, the legs pull out of there, you lay them on the ground, then you put the table onto the ledge, then flatten the cushions out and it makes a nice big bed. There's a light switch. Nice pantry here. It's the light inside. See, right now you can feel that it will shake a little bit. Once you put those legs down, those stabilizer legs, you won't get any shaking at all. Okay, bedroom. Two hanging closets with storage above. Two lights underneath the bed. You have some storage underneath here with a doggy door on the side. Now your window here, it says exit. This is a, like a fire escape window. The way this works is you simply open it up, push this out, then shove this all the way out. This will shove all the way out. This is hinged at the top. So push it out, pull the screen out by pulling this, push the window out and jump. Now, if you want ventilation in the evenings, you can use it for ventilation just like that. But that is your escape window if you can't get to the front door. Again, that's, you have heat, heat ducts, air conditioning vents in here, make it very comfortable. That's pretty much the tour of the inside. Uh, if you have any questions, please give us a call here at RCD. Enjoy your coach and thanks for your business.